pihak Yayasan Indonesia Peduli atau juga khusus. Saya juga menyambut Bapak Ibu dan sekalian untuk datang ke sini dan selamat datang gitu dan selamat belajar juga ini untuk kalian sekalian ya. Dan untuk uh, untuk membuka acara ini sebelumnya saya ingin uh, menjelaskan tentang uh, Yayasan Indonesia Peduli atau juga khusus sendiri. Jadi memang Yayasan kami uh, IMABK biasa dipanggil juga merupakan suatu yayasan yang memang kami membantu, mengadvokat dan juga mengedukasi dan juga kita mengkreat di mana misalnya kita membantu anak-anak berkebutuhan khusus gitu. Jadi kita biasanya juga mengadakan acara tahunan dan Power of Music kedua ini merupakan suatu, uh, salah satu bentuk event yang kami lakukan untuk uh, sekaligus kita juga ingin mendidik anak-anak didik kita, sekaligus kita juga ingin memperkenalkan kepada misalnya masyarakat umum bahwa Uh, ada loh, misalnya memang suatu misalnya komunitas yang butuh perhatian khusus dan juga sekaligus untuk mendidik kepada mereka gitu. Dan kebetulan pada kesempatan yang berharga ini kita juga kedatangan dua tamu yang luar biasa sekali, yaitu Profesor Nigel Clayton dan juga Ima Setiadi gitu. Nah mungkin sedikit om untuk menjelaskan tentang profil dari beliau, Profesor Nigel sendiri merupakan suatu uh, seorang profesor musik dan juga uh, beliau juga guru musik sekaligus di Royal College of Music gitu. Beliau juga selain sebagai profesor dan guru yang luar biasa, beliau juga di mata dunia terkenal sekali. Jadi udah sering misalnya tampil di berbagai recital. Beliau juga misalnya keliling dunia untuk hanya untuk mengajar. Gitu. Dan sekaligus beliau juga ingin menunjukkan bahwa ada loh istilahnya kekuatan musik yang di mana itu bisa mengubah hidup seseorang. Gitu. Dan pada kesempatan kali ini, Robert, uh, Profesor Nigel juga akan share tentang bagaimana secaranya uh, peserta-peserta didik ini ataupun guru dalam mereka juga mengajar sekaligus belajar yang efektif lewat musik gitu. Dan hopefully dari apa yang mereka belajar mereka juga bisa mengubah hidupnya, gitu ya. Dan juga sekaligus saya juga ingin memperkenalkan tamu kita yang kedua yaitu Ima Setiadi, Ibu Ima ya. Mungkin dipanggil Ibu atau terserah ya Ibu Ima Dan Ibu Ima sendiri juga uh, dari kecil Beliau juga uh, aktif ya dari dari musik Jadi berangkat dari uh, ketertarikan yang terhadap piano Sampai akhirnya dia meneruskan sampai sekarang Dia sudah menjadi kandidat doktor di bidang musik Khususnya di bidang piano Dan beliau juga, uh, Ima sendiri juga berada di bawah didikan Profesor Nigel sendiri Dan juga oleh Miss Amanda Klaw itu ya dan mungkin dan mungkin uh, setelah mereka uh, akan memulai workshopnya mereka berdua juga akan uh, nanti akan sistemnya itu akan seperti master class jadi di mana nanti akan ada siswa yang uh, atau uh, peserta didik yang akan nanti maju ke depan dan dididik secara private oleh profesor aja gitu jadi, uh, jadi nanti akan satu-satu dimaju ke depan dan nanti akan dijelaskan misalnya private musik yang akan dibawakan oleh profesor gitu. Nah, dan sebelum kita juga memulai acara ini, Profesor Nigel dan juga Ima akan men-sharing tentang the joy of teaching dan juga the joy of learning. Dan hopefully dari sharing mereka, kita semua juga bisa belajar bersama-sama. Dan tanpa menunggu lama lagi, mari kita sambut Profesor Nigel dan juga Ima Setiaga. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope it's is this strong enough? It's okay. It's okay. Um, thank you for coming. It's nice to see you all here, and it's it's always a pleasure for me to come to Indonesia and especially to Jakarta. Um, just before we we're going back to London, even tomorrow. So um, it's a special final day for us to be here and to not only talk about the issues that. Kevin has mentioned now, but also to have the concert afterwards, which didn't happen the first time, is rather a nice addition to the whole event, to actually hear the, the students playing and also for us to do some of our own playing. So it's a nice mixture, I think, for the whole of the afternoon and the day. Is that okay? Nah, apa kan sampai ini? So far so good. Yes. So keep going. Very going good. Um, so the some of the, the issues that that come to mind, um, it's not only um, important for the students to learn music. That's one incredibly important thing. But it's to know 
for the teachers to know why they would teach music to people with special needs. Um, sometimes it's, it's a challenge um, in different ways to teaching other people. Um, and in other situations, it's actually a huge reward. And we were discussing earlier on um, in the other room how um, it's not, I think I even said something like this before, but I had forgotten that I had said it, that, that, that students with special needs, maybe it's wrong to think of them with special needs, but actually to, to think they've got special gifts. And I feel that, that uh, you know, within five, well, not even five minutes, but the, even within one minute of sitting down next to Michael um, playing the duets, um, that there was something there that was not teachable, not, not something that could have been taught. We were playing the duet, a lovely English piece actually, by Elgar, Salut d'Amour, and um, he was adding in some rather interesting chords that weren't written on the music, and he couldn't have learned those because um, you know, he couldn't see them. So he was doing it orally, adding some almost like um, extra cream filling to what was already a beautiful tune, making it even more delicious and completely naturally. Now, I don't think in where I teach in the Royal College of Music, however advanced some of the pianists become there, that they could necessarily do that. Sometimes our, our playing is so prescriptive we learn exactly what we should do. We, we learn exactly what the composer has said. We, we recreate exactly what is there, which is good, but it also slightly cuts out the possibility of speaking the language of music. And I would s relate that to language, speaking. When, when we meet someone um, like yourself, if I came to you and I said, hi, nice to meet you. What's your name? And, and what do you do in your life, Olivia? Uh, music teacher, piano teacher. So she didn't know I was going to ask that question, but because she understands language, she can answer it quite spontaneous. Now, if we had learned that, because it was a great speech by Shakespeare, and I said, Hi, Olivia, what's your name? Olivia. And what do you do? you already knew what I was going to say. So um, that, that element of spontaneity, suddenly doing something, um, has gone. But we could do the first way because you understand language. I understand language. We can improvise and react. And I think sometimes in classical music, we lose that ability of two-way conversation that happens now, like, like jazz, like a jazz pianist just responds to what the drummer's doing and, and the other way around also. Um, so to hear Michael doing that, thinking, gosh, you know, already he's kind of doing something that some of my, you know, really good students can't actually do. He's doing something. So special gifts, not special needs. And then um, after that, a little bit later on, we were sitting there. I'm just talking about Michael because he's the only one that I've had immediate contact with this time so far. Um, that when we, at the end, um, um, Ivana said that he, he'll find any note that you play. So I played a couple of notes and he found exactly the right note. And I was quite cautious. I played another note here and he found it quite quickly. And this one here found it quite quickly. But then she played like four notes and he found them all. And then I've a cluster of notes here and he found those too. I thought, actually, I couldn't do that. I actually couldn't do that. If I closed my eyes and, and he did the same that I just did to him, I couldn't do it. Not as quickly as he can. So that's rather a special gift rather than a special need. And I think that's what makes it exciting for teachers is you don't quite know what you've got. You know, you've got some ability and they'll learn a nice piece of Debussy or a nice piece of Bergmuller. But, you know, what's beyond that? What kind of, like... Mir miraculous tricks could they do that you don't know about yet? And that in itself is, as a teacher, is quite um, attractive. It should be an attractive thing that I'm going to find out what things this boy can do or this girl can do that I can't even do myself. And I think with special needs, as you say, but with especially gifted students, some things may be 
more difficult, and it may be the easier things that are more difficult, but lying behind those easy things is a, a sort of, you're touching genius, you know, you're, you're on the edge of something really extraordinary, which you can never know what it is, and who knows what Michael can do that we don't know he can do yet? Who knows what any of, of the students can do that you don't know yet? Um, I think it's extraordinary, especially if someone is also unsighted. My goodness, that's amazing. I mean, it makes us also think of what a miracle Beethoven was, because he was deaf. That's, he, that's really hard, I think, for a musician to be deaf. And look what he did with his life. So that was the first general point I was going to make. Are we OK so far? Just maybe you can check. Are we okay so far? <laughs> Mau diterjemahin sedikit atau ya? Yeah. So um, rangkumannya itu tidak hanya penting untuk murid-murid untuk belajar musik, tapi juga sama pentingnya buat para untuk para guru untuk mengerti juga mengapa itu penting untuk mengajarkan musik, um, terutama untuk anak-anak yang quotation mark berkebutuhan khusus. Kadang-kadang untuk teman-teman yang kita kita panggil berkebutuhan khusus ini mereka sebenarnya memiliki kelebihan khusus dan mungkin itu bisa memberi sudut pandang lain untuk bagaimana kita uh, mengerti mereka atau menggali potensi yang mereka memiliki um, tentu saja banyak sekali cara-cara lain yang akan kita temui untuk belajar atau mengajar teman-teman yang memiliki kemampuan khusus ini yang pada akhirnya nanti juga memiliki memberikan tantangan dan Excitement, that's a really hard word to translate. <laughs> menarik. Ex- what is excitement? Menarik sekali. Like that. <laughs> that is exciting. <laughs> excitement untuk dalam mengajar dan belajar dengan teman-teman ini. Um, teman-teman yang ber- berkebu- berke- memiliki kelebihan khusus ini, mereka mempunyai banyak sekali kual- uh, kualitas yang seringkali nggak bi- bisa diajarkan. Itu seperti kayak buka peta harta karun, terus hartanya, terus kotaknya dibuka. Kita nggak akan tahu itu ada apa kejutan yang menunggu kita. Contohnya tadi beliau ada sedikit main bermain dengan Michael, banyak sekali kualitas untuk um, timing, nuansa suara yang sudah dimiliki. Um, untuk belajar musik klasik, kadang-kadang kita cenderung untuk memainkan lagu tersebut secara preskriptif, karena semuanya sudah dituliskan dan um, lupa untuk merasakan spontanitas dan kreativitas yang ada. Contohnya mungkin dalam dalam bahasa, kalau setelah kita belajar bahasnya bahasa tersebut kita tahu kata-kata yang dipakai kata-kata apa saja, tapi bukan berarti nanti kita bilangnya halo, apa kabar, apakah anda baik-baik saja. Meskipun kita tahu kata-kata tersebut secara baik, ketika kita berbicara satu sama lain kita akan melakukannya dengan spontanitas dan kreativitas seperti Um, seni komunikasi, musik memiliki kemampuan seperti itu. Contohnya juga dalam membaca puisi. Um, contoh lain um, untuk excitement dalam mengajar <laughs> dalam mengajar musik untuk teman-teman yang memiliki kemampuan khusus ini um, adalah karena kita tidak akan pernah tahu potensi apa yang ada di dalam ini. Kita lewat pengajaran kita sehari-hari, kita tidak tahu um, tombol bakat apa yang akan kita pencet hari ini yang akan di saat uh, di masa mendatang akan berkembang menjadi jauh dan yang apa yang kita sebut kebutuhan khusus itu sebenarnya tidak menjadi hambatan contohnya Beethoven yang gak, tidak bisa mendengar tentunya sangat su- sangat sulit untuk menjadi uh, musisi yang tidak bisa mendengar tapi bayangkan apa yang sudah dia beliau Beethoven lakukan dalam hidupnya banyak sekali Um, jadi itu juga sesuatu yang bisa kita ingat ketika mengajar um, teman-teman yang sebenarnya memiliki kelebihan khusus ini. Now, Nigel, I have a question. Since you were talking about um, music as language and then you were touching about reading poetry a, a little bit, mm. isn't it interesting uh, to see that you don't need that many words to write a poem? Don't you think so? Mm. So even just simple words can make such beautiful poem. So do you think it, it, it also applies in music and in teaching about music mm. in terms of the tools mm. that one can apply and mm. the amount of creativity one can do? I think that, that, that taking up from 
with that question in mind and taking from what we said about the ability to use music as a language which we can throw around like jazz musicians do more often and we can talk the language of music like Michael showed he could add in some chords which weren't prepared he just heard them in his head and played them that's really speaking a language um, the, the written down version is more easy is easier to take time over you can sit and think about it but actually to have a conversation like we had requires the the knowledge of vocabulary and the ability to construct it immediately and I was going to say in, in response to this question leading on from that that um, you know to enhance somebody's life you don't need the whole of the English dictionary in order to benefit from the language. You can just have one or two words to start with. So when you teach someone middle C, um, that's a start. You might say, gosh, you know, it's taken a long time to get to that point. But don't forget what we said. There could be something else that we don't know that's incredible about this person you've only taught middle C to. Um, the other thing is that middle C could represent, I don't know, the word and. Well, that's an incredibly useful word. And how many times do we use and? And another word could be the. <laughs> you know, the and and could, you know, can, can make almost half a sentence quite often. We, we say many things and many other things and many other things. And on top of that, you can say many other things. And, 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 and. It's a very useful word. So learning middle C is not a waste of time, even if it takes three lessons. Um, I'm not saying it would. Um, for, and for example, if you taught G, if you teach the letter G, um, if that's the word the, and, and you taught the letter E flat, or the note E flat, you've already got, and if, if you said the G three times, and you said the E once, you went and, and, and the, <laughs> you've got this. That's a pretty famous tune. I mean, that's one of the most famous musical combinations that's ever been written. It's only two notes. The whole orchestra plays those notes at the opening of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. The whole orchestra. So you've got, actually, you've, you've touched. Sorry. <laughs> you've touched. You've touched um, something incredibly great just with those two words without realizing that that was possible. Um, and the, the, the um, comparison with poetry is also true, that when you learn a few notes, you can actually put together some quite nice tunes. And I liken it to poetry, because if you write a novel, um, you tend to use many, 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 many words when you're writing a story. But poetry uses special words that mean a lot. There's a lot of concentration in the words of a poem. So when you're learning middle C, you've learned more than just one note. Um, you could learn a C major scale by the time you've, you've had three months of, of training. You think, well, that's been a lot of effort to, to learn the C major scale. How many pieces are filled with C major scales? I mean, the last movement of that symphony, dum dum da, dum dum bum 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 ba, dum da da C major, dum da da C major, ba da 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 C major, ba da 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 C major, da 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 da. It changes a bit there, but most of that symphony is based on C major scales and arpeggios. What a great piece that is! So, therefore, don't be frustrated about the speed of, of um, learning that someone could have. Because you might be, um, it's like when you, uh, you cook and you, you have a, a very loose kind of soup, and then you keep boiling it, and boiling it becomes quite thick, like a thick sauce, and it, it adds flavor to the whole meal eventually. It's the same with learning notes. You add flavor to the whole of the possible of your future learning through that. Um, yes, were you going to ask another question? There you are, C major, da, da, da. <laughs> Perfect fifth. <laughs> Perfect fifth. Perfect fifth. Okay, maybe mm. I just give a quick summary yes, from yes. what you said and then yes. we can go from there. Yeah. Um, untuk mengambil contoh menggunakan musik untuk um, seperti bahasa atau kata-kata, kadang-kadang banyak kata berbicara, banyak kata mengungkapkan lebih sedikit rasa, sedikit berkata, sedikit menggunakan kata-kata, makna yang diungkapkan bisa lebih banyak. Um, mak Dari, dari situ kita bisa ber, men, men, merefleksikan bahwa um, 
kemampuan kreativitas seseorang atau apa yang bisa didapatkan dari belajar itu bukan semata-mata tergantung dari kecepatan belajar atau berapa banyak topik yang bisa dibahas dalam suatu kali pertemuan atau hal-hal seperti itu meskipun hal-hal yang kita ajarkan melalui musik atau yang bisa dipelajari oleh anak-anak di kita itu um, kelihatannya hanya hal-hal sederhana tidak ada hal-hal yang akan terbuang dari hal-hal yang sudah kita ajarkan itu karena meskipun bisa meng, uh, anak ini hanya bisa belajar membaca not atau tangan ada yang sederhana sudah banyak sekali jendela dan pintu dari dunia musik dunia musik klasik yang bisa dia um, dapatkan lalu juga um, jangan menjadi frustasi um, jika kecepatan belajar anak didiknya mungkin tidak terlalu cepat karena dari situ juga kita nggak kita kan untuk bisa membuat um, puisi yang baik contohnya tidak perlu membutuhkan semua kata-kata dalam kamus uh, hanya dengan menggunakan kata-kata yang sederhana yang kita ajarkan teman-teman kita ini sudah bisa uh, berkarya lebih jauh lagi di masa depannya nanti so and i i'll continue to say that um, from the point of view of the students learning from the teachers that's also very important to to weigh up the importance of what you